There's only so long people are willing to keep our troops in that part of the world. The reaction from Karzai to me is funny because he's negotiating with a group of people who do this sort of thing every day before breakfast. Mm. So, I mean, his, his outrage should reflect what is on the ground with the Taliban every day. I mean, this is, this is not accepted in their society, but it is persistent. So as far as our timeline of withdrawal and for goodwill, I think we were planning on getting out of there pretty soon anyway, am I, am I, am I right? No, I, I, th I think you're right. I, I think that um, this is, unfortunately, now we'll just see that the withdrawal process, which is lengthy when you have, you know, tens of thousands of soldiers. Yeah, we're not throwing of helicopters the off of ships. Yeah, exactly. The withdrawal process, it could be complicated by this because, you know, the more of this sort of fervor and resentment you have of U.S. soldiers on the ground, the more likely it is that some of them will be targeted and there'll be these sorts of, you know, there'll be violent incidents against U.S. soldiers. So clearly we want things there to be quiet for the withdrawal, quiet as much as it can be. And this sort of thing can cause flare-ups that result in really serious violence. Mm -hmm. Well, let's uh, ask Brandon, who we now have on the phone. We're joined on the phone by former Navy SEAL and editor of SoftRep.com. Brandon Webb. Brandon, thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks. Um, I just want to comment on the, the you know, I heard the, the, use, the UCMJ reference earlier, but, I mean, to, to me, this is clearly an individual that has some serious psychological problems, and it's less about UCMJ and, and really, you know, digging the service record and seeing, you know, where the early signs of, of mental instability, you know, this is, you know, you, this guy is a pretty disturbed individual. So yeah, let me ask you about that, Brendan. Uh, in your experience, have you ever seen, you know, a, a fellow soldier who appears to have emotional, mental issues, and how has that person dealt with? Well, in my background in the in the SEAL community and the special operations community at large, you know, we we really do a good job at kind of weeding out the, you know, the mentally unstable. So, you know, it hasn't been a something I've seen. In my career, when I served, just because just the nature of the the individuals that, that make up the special operations community, but I mean, it, this is just something that you know is clearly you know the chain of command needs to look at. You know, where there are warning signs, and, and that's where it gets into the you know the, the unit commander and the and the commanding officer's responsibility to dig in there and, and see if these early warning signs were there. Are you surprised that this individual wasn't spotted earlier? They you know, somehow he could be, you know, stewing and stirring and then all of a sudden go out there and kill all these innocent Afghan civilians? Yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough to armchair quarterback it in, in, in hindsight. But typically in most these situations, even on U.S. soil, when you when you have a, a tragic situation like this, you know, usually when you dig into it, the signs are there and and everyone wonders why, why no, you know, nobody raised, raised the red flag beforehand. You know, Brandon, this is Will Kane. I think we're all dancing around exactly the issue that kind of leaves me wondering, what does this mean to snap? We keep saying snapping. And, you know, I look at this, and this guy's been in the military for quite a long time. He's had five tours of duty, five to yeah. Iraq. This is his first one to Afghanistan. So you keep suggesting there had to have been something prior, some hint, some evidence that something like this was in his, his capabilities and his personality, right? I mean, it can't just be this bright line. And I know you're not a psychiatrist. I know you're not a psychotherapist. <laughs> but you've yeah. been in these situations a lot, a hell of a lot more than I have. Let's put it that way. So well, um, is it the snapping thing we throw around, is that a little bit uh, inappropriate? No, I don't think it's inappropriate. When you look at, you know, how human beings are shaped into the, into the people we are, and it, it has to do with life experiences. And, you know, this here you have an individual that has multiple tours, and, and I, don't, I don't know the specifics of that, but... You know, if you don't have the the kind of mental tools to deal with these types of situations over and over again, you know, being in the, that environment, it does it does affect the psyche of the individual. So I, I think, you know, over time, this guy was developing some serious issues. And and one more. What I'd like to know is, is if the warning signs are there. Well, Brandon, one more thing that you seem to have particular insight on. This guy wasn't special forces, but you were a sniper, am I right? With the seals. Correct. Right. This guy was a sniper as well, right, guys? That's what this this guy was a sniper in the regular infantry. Is there any particular pressures being a sniper, whether on special forces in the regular infantry, that might have contributed to this in any way? Any particular pressures that you might have experienced? No. Well, the, the thing is, we you know the term sniper gets thrown around uh, a lot, and I I doubt that this guy had been through a, a very thorough sniper course like SODIC. The Army has a very very good course called the SODIC. Uh, the SEALs, we have our own course. It's three months long, but 
you, you got to realize, you, you know, this, this is, you know, going through a, a special operations forces selection process in itself gives you a, you know, it, has, it takes a mentally hard and tough individual uh, sure. to begin with, but uh, this is it's just a, on a whole different level. Brandon, let me tough. ask you, uh, let me ask you this. I, you know, th this, this guy's name has not been released, I assume. That's because there's an ongoing investigation and also for his continued safety until he's brought back here. I'm wondering what kind of reception would he get in the servicemen community? I mean, you guys can't like like it when this happens. You can't you, you can't like this this guy for for what he you know the pall that he brings to the mission and and um, s service in general. I mean, we've talked about how rare this is, of course. But I imagine um, this guy will not be well liked I I within the community, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's isolated. I mean, this this does nothing but bring shame on on every good man and you know the good men and women in uniform. So you know, it, it's it's not something anyone's proud of. So uh, I this guy has to be isolated, and, and you know, no, no one no one likes to be in this situation, especially when you have boots on the ground and, and not stand, stand. Right. Well, Brandon, before we go, I do, I do want to ask you about that. With boots on the ground, you've been there. You've worked with the Afghans on the ground. What uh, do you anticipate will happen uh, with our U.S. troops there after this incident? Has this destroyed any chance of uh, cooperation between Afghan soldiers and U.S. soldiers? I don't think so, um, but I, I really think on the bigger picture, you know, what, what concerns me is you know, how is the U.S. going to be remembered by the Afghan people as a whole, you know? And it's just, to me, it's, it's, it's a tragedy in the making. And my guess would be we're going to be viewed a lot like the, the Soviets were. Ah, well, those words. Brendan, we thank you so much for joining us and filling us in. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks. When we come back, Mitt, come back, Mitt Romney is pulling ahead of President Barack Obama in a hypothetical November matchup.